You've heard me mentioning it the last couple weeks, and I am so excited to finally announce my Tapping to Massive Money and Abundance program. It is now live. This course is going to be an absolute game changer for you. This seven-day course is so simple and so quick to fit into even the busiest of schedules. Each daily lesson only takes 10 to 15 minutes, and all you have to do is watch my pre-recorded video and follow along with the prompts by tapping on each of the specific body parts, which I thoroughly lay out and explain for you. This course is going to fully reprogram your limiting beliefs, rewire your old money paradigms as we shift into bigger, better, and new ones. We're going to recondition your thought patterns around wealth so that you believe And your body believes that you are worthy of all the money in the world that you desire. You are worthy of all the freedom and abundance that you are so desperately craving. It is your time to claim this reality for yourself now. I'm going to help you with this incredibly easy and very affordable course to make your wildest dreams a reality in 2023. If you are ready to get out of your own way and remove some of the biggest money blocks, then this course is for you and you are going to want to grab it today. Don't waste another precious moment being held back any longer. The link for this course is in my show notes, so make sure that you get signed up today. Welcome to the Empowered Podcast with Deanna Merlino, an all-encompassing personal development show where I will be sharing with you just how to transform yourself into the best version of you, both inside and out. From wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and manifestation, I'll be showing you exactly how to live your best life. I will be keeping it as real and raw as it gets. So get ready to peel back the layers and really transform yourself under the surface because nothing is better than finding your purpose and living this life as your true, authentic self. Hello, Empowered fam. Welcome back. Happy to be with you all tonight doing an evening recording here. And last month, we talked all about wellness and Uh, With the episode with Annie, we really started to dive into entrepreneurship as well, which is what I plan on talking about all of February. Just really looking at the journey of entrepreneurship, what it took to get started, the struggles overcoming them, um, the beauties and the blessings of being an entrepreneur. Uh, So if you're someone who is interested in becoming your own boss or you're in the valleys right now, or maybe you're thriving right now. I want to talk about all the ups and downs and all the things that come out of entrepreneurship. So why not start with my story? So I am, if you guys have been following along for a while, you've probably heard most of my story. If you're a loyal follower, then I'm pretty open about my story, so I'm sure you know, but I'm going to do a full recap of just kind of how it started, how it's going, where we're at, and you know what my 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 thought and my focus is for the future. So Starting at the beginning, um, I grew up having parents who are entrepreneurs. So it's something that I was submersed in and have been seeing my entire life. And it's so funny because I never grew up thinking like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't really think that, honestly. Um, I saw how much struggle my parents had to go through. They had a very successful rental business, but I also saw the stress that that carried. Um, And it, it, it goes hand in hand with the old way of thinking for that generation. Um, I feel like it was very much of doing things the hard way and not asking for help. Like I feel like if they had outsourced help, it would have been much easier, which is what I'm doing now. So it was never really on my mind to be an entrepreneur per se, but I grew up seeing it. I saw what it took. I saw what it offered. I saw the blessings. I saw the freedom. And as I grew up, as I got older, I started as I've mentioned before, jumping from job to job because I was never happy. I was never given enough freedom. I was restricted. I didn't like having constraints, whether that be a schedule or a boss that was really crappy or coworkers that just are miserable. Like There was just always something that I never stuck it out for very long. And, and it wasn't because I had 
poor uh, work ethic or was bad at what I did, I actually always thrived. I always was pushing for more, but I never felt like I was being appreciated for the value that I brought to whatever company I was with. And so I think it really started to cross my mind when I was bartending. I bartended for like eight years. Um, and the really cool thing about bartending, at least in the bars that I worked at, is I was given a lot of freedom. Um, I rang really high. I always had a high ringing drawer. I always brought in a lot of people, customers. And so because I rang so high and brought the business a lot of money, they just kind of gave me free reign to do whatever I wanted. Like I didn't have someone looking over my shoulder. So I really loved that feeling. And the last few jobs that I held in corporate America, um, one of the bigger ones where I was high up in management, I had a lot of responsibility. And I was given a lot of freedom to do what I was good at. Like I was allowed to be in my genius. And I realized in that, that I loved being able to do that, but I still had a boss. I still had to clock in and out. I still had to, you know, have someone check in on what I was doing. And the last job that I held, um, I was really good at that too. I was in sales. I was getting, I got promoted really quickly. And it's funny because that was more of like a, a masculine job. I was wearing steel toe boots to work. I was selling tools and um, like screws and stuff like that. But I was getting sent on trainings for because I was so good at what I was doing. But my coworkers were so miserable that I was like, I just can't do this anymore. So in that process of those last few years, I realized like the 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 tires were spinning. Right, the thought had been planted in my mind that I wanted more. I wanted different. I wanted freedom. And so I started working um, in network marketing. And I remember when I was approached about it, I am like that rare circumstance where I was just like, yes, like immediately I saw the value in it. I didn't do a a ton of research. I just knew that it was something with health and wellness. And I have done several bodybuilding competitions. I love nutrition. I love working out. I love being healthy and helping people with that. So it was a no-brainer to me. And all I knew was that I wasn't going to have a boss and it was completely up to me how successful I was or how successful I was not. And I loved that. I love a challenge. And so I dove in. Like I I am not a, I'm not statistical when it comes to that. Like I I dove right in. I started right imme- immediately and I promoted to the first level of the, of the company within a couple weeks. And the the moment I got that recognition Like I was getting so much stuff for promoting from my upline. They truly appreciated me. They were applauding my hard work and effort. And I was like, wait a minute, like this is super different than what I'm used to. Um, I'm used to begging for a raise at the end of the year and getting maybe a dollar if I'm I'm lucky. And normally it's like a 25 cent raise. And in that moment, not only did I get a, a good raise, but the recognition and the praise, I immediately was hooked. And so I continued to build that business until I got to the point where I was like, okay, I have the ability to step away from working a job that I'm miserable at. And at that point, because personal development is such a key in network marketing, I had built myself up to have faith in myself. I built myself up to believe in myself. And so I want to take a moment here just to appreciate this and really hit on this. Personal development is so important for so many reasons, whether you own a business or you want to own a business or not, like personal development is key in up-leveling and who you are as a human being. It encourages and pushes you to think bigger, to see things from a different way, to realize that there's always a choice, to realize how valuable you are. And when I did that, I was like, okay, I have always loved exercising. I know so much about working out. How about I become a personal trainer? And so I was doing that alongside network marketing and I was super happy and I loved it for like three weeks (laughs) because uh, the COVID-19 pandemic hit and everything shut down. And I'm in New York. So my state got hit really hard. Like they were super strict. Gyms were closed. So immediately I'm like, what did I do? I left a really good paying job where I was getting bonuses, where I had benefits. 
And it's scary when you become an entrepreneur and you aren't, you don't have health care, you don't have that retirement built in, right? Like everything is up to you to make it work. And that can be daunting at first. But if you truly know that you're going to give it your all, if you truly know that you're going to put all your effort into it, then don't worry about those types of things. Like, yeah, be aware, but know that it's a long-term game. And if you know that you have the commitment and the ability to make it work, you're going to find a way. You're going to make it happen. Like if you have to pay for your own insurance, make sure that you're making so much money that who cares if you have to pay for your insurance, right? Like you'll get to that. So everything shut down. I'm panicking. Um, And that's when I truly learned what it was to be an entrepreneur. I could have laid down and cried, which I mean, I did. But like you could I could have laid down and just given it all up and been like, oh, well, the world shut down. So I can't sell anything. But I didn't. What I chose to do is pivot. And I think pivoting is one of the most important things that you can do and have to learn as an entrepreneur because things are never going to go the way that you expect them to 100% of the time. There's always going to be things. There's always going to be something that comes up. There's always something that's going to need to be done differently. You're going to have to think outside of the box. You're going to have to get outside of your comfort zone. And if you do, it will pay off immensely. If you do, your business is going to thrive and succeed. There's one thing that I have learned in network marketing, and that is the only way for you to be unsuccessful, the only way for you to fail is to quit because it's only a matter of time before you build up your business big enough that it will be successful. And I always believed that. And I know that to be true. And I I applied that to, to everything that I was doing as well. And so I'm someone who loves to do all the things. Like if I'm good at it, then I want to try and see how far I can take it. And I was pregnant. I found out I was pregnant. This is during the pandemic still. And I was like, you know what? I want to make sure that I don't have to count on the gym being open. I want to make sure that I don't have to count on anyone else or anything else. So pregnant old me decided to create DM Fit, which is my personal training app. And it has workout plans that are both in person and in the gym. And they're always rotating so that you don't plateau. And here I am, extra pregnant, in the gym, recording these videos. And of course, I had the thoughts and the doubts. Like, who is going to want to buy an exercise app from a girl who feels like a whale. <laughs> like honestly, like of course those thoughts were in my head, but I will never let let negative thoughts dictate my outcomes. I will never let negative thoughts dictate my success. So I did it anyhow because I felt called to it and it felt aligned and it felt right and it felt true to me. And so I did that. And then I realized that I love getting certifications. I love learning more. I love knowledge. Like I loved when I was going through the personal training certification. Like I loved learning. I just dove right in. And so I decided to continue learning. I wanted to learn anything that interested me. And while I was pregnant, I realized how important it was for me to start healing my traumas, which is something that you guys know I'm so big on. And when you have a child, it's like literally prove it, proven. Um, I think it's called epigenomes that might that might be the wrong word but epigenetics there we go your your dna your trauma all the everything that's stored in your dna gets passed on to your child so essentially any unprocessed trauma of my own i was going to be handing off to my kid and that was going to be his to deal with and i didn't want to do that so i really dove into the world of healing energy healing processing trauma reprogramming your limiting beliefs all anything that I could do to give my son a leg up in the world and make it just 1% easier for him, I wanted to make sure I did that. And in doing that, I fell in love with all things healing, all things trauma work, all things reprogramming those limiting beliefs. And I fell in love with manifesting and all these things and kind of like shifting out of that place of woe is me 
you did this to me. You caused this to happen. This is happening to me because of something you did to me. And shifting into that place of me taking control of the situation and doing everything that I can do to create and dictate the outcome that I want of any scenario and any situation. Like the only person I want to be responsible for everything happening in my life that I can control, like my business and my success, I wanted that to rely on me. Because who can I control? Me and no one else. I can only control and you can only control the way we respond to situations that happen to us. So in doing so, I learned that I loved Reiki. And so I became certified in Reiki. And it was, as along with many other things, I've gotten so many different certifications um, and healing modalities in the holistic realm. And so actually, I did an episode on this a while back. Um, I was taking a trip to visit my best friend in Florida. And it wasn't too long after I'd got my Reiki certification. And in doing so, I had this epiphany and just uh, just one thing after another, one message after another, one it just the whole trip was just like playing itself out for me and one thing was falling into my lap after another and i don't want to dive into that too deep you can go back and listen to that episode um i wish i knew what number it was but anyhow essentially it was made very clear to me that it was so important that i was to make a reiki course an online reiki course and online courses in general as i learned to teach other people so that they can learn how to heal their traumas and transmute that and their transmute their pain into their power and be able to then help themselves and build themselves up so that they get to a point so that they can reach back and help the people behind them. So collectively, we are making a difference in not only our own lives, but others' li- others' lives and really making a positive impact and change in the world. Like that is my calling. I want to empower myself so that I can empower you so that you can empower others. That's my business model (laughs) in a nutshell. And so that's what I've been doing is creating all these things. And it's always pivoting. It's always expanding. It's always growing. I started a retreat business with my best friend, with Brittany, who's been on the podcast. And all we want to do is help people heal through the healing modalities that we have learned And we want to grow that into something huge. I don't know if you guys have heard of the Almost 30 podcast, but that is what we have in mind. That's what I want to grow to be. I want to create a membership platform for us all to come to, to heal together. We want to offer the retreats. We're now offering three a year. Um, I'm going to be start talking about those soon. The next one coming up, we just created our our layout for what the schedule is going to be like. I'm so excited. And from there, who knows what's going to keep happening? Right now, I'm focusing on making all of these courses and continuing to grow myself so I can help you all grow. And the cycle continues, right? And there's so much that has come up along the way. So much. Like I'm actually in like a very sentimental uh, mood today because just thinking about recording episode with Annie Graft is just mind boggling to me. Like truly, when I started my network marketing company, Annie was like the first person that I saw that I was really attracted to in the sense of I was like, I want to build a life like that. Annie was what motivated me to start my personal training app. Never in a million years. That's not true because I did. I I knew deep in my soul. I knew like you are going to do these things where you're going to be able to cross paths with these people. But like now that it's happening, it's so mind boggling to me. Like Annie Graft is on the podcast. Like that's wild. Who's next? <laughs> Debbie Neal. Like I got to manifest meeting Debbie Neal in Vegas. I told you guys all about that. Like as these things are happening, not only is it wild to me and exciting, I've always believed that I could create the re- the reality of my dreams and it's happening. But as it happens, it's creating and allowing for me to dream so much bigger because truly I'm starting to get to a point where I'm like, okay, now what? What's next? But I'm also, and I want you guys to dream that big, like dream that big because you can make it happen. You can make it happen. But in that, I never want to uh, dilute or ignore 
and just jump over the fact that it's not always easy. Like there will always be stuff along the way. Would it have been easier to just stay miserable in a nine to five job with a boss that I hated, probably get decent pay, our households taken care of, we're comfortable? Yes. But my soul would not have been happy. My flame would have been stifled. We're not all here to just stay in a comfort zone, to stay in a box and stay miserable and do the thing that we're told to do and just live day in and day out, waiting for your paycheck, living paycheck to paycheck, doing working for someone else, even if you don't feel called to. If you do feel called to do that, then that's fantastic because that means it makes you happy and I'm happy for you. But right now I'm talking to the people who are really looking at their life and dissecting it and saying, I want more. I want bigger. I want better. I don't like using the word, honestly, or using the word want, honestly. I should say I desire bigger. I desire more. I desire different because you have the power to make that happen. But I look back at some of the things. I want to make sure that I jump back and forth here between the highlights and the lowlights because it's so easy to look at people on social media. I know that I am coming up on the point where there's going to be people looking at my life from afar and saying, wow, she's got it easy. Wow, that happened fast. Like There's going to be someone who comes along soon, who pops up on social media, who they're going to see me sitting somewhere on a beach with a drink in my hand and me talking about how I really made it happen. And they're going to say, well, it's so easy for her. Well, it doesn't happen that easy. You know, whatever, whatever limiting beliefs pop up. But your level two in comparison to someone's level 20 shouldn't be a comparison. They're just different places in our journey. Everyone struggles. Everyone always has an option. You can either lay down and roll over and play dead and just muddle on through life, or you can commit and decide that I'm going to make it through no matter what. When my dad died, that was a moment. for That was a long moment. That wasn't just a moment. That's a continued moment, right? Like, let me be very clear. I have a lot of ups and downs with that, especially because that relationship had its strains over the years, and it just got to such a good place. And it's kind of like, wow, I wasted so much time. You know, I I look back on when that happened and I think I spent a lot of time in shock, like not believing that it happened. So I kind of just ignored it. Like I kept telling myself like, oh, he's just working somewhere else. I think I'm fully to the point where I grasp that he is gone. And it would have been very easy for me to just set it all down, to just let it all go because it takes so much energy and effort not in a bad way. It just does. It takes consistency and focus and commitment and clarity to be an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur for it to be a business and not a hobby. And that was the biggest hang up that I've had that I could have just set it all down. Having a child, like a whole human being who relies on me at every moment of the day, I could list a million reasons why it would be easier for me not to pursue entrepreneurship but it doesn't matter. And you have to make that choice. No matter what it is that comes up for you, choose yourself in your entrepreneurship journey and making it a success. I think sometimes our biggest reasons why at some point become our biggest excuses. And that's when you get tripped up. That's when you let it all go. Instead, Remember why your why is your why. I do it because I want to give my son this grand life. And I want to create a legacy that I can pass on to him. My why is to keep living my dad's legacy forward. Like use the the things that make it hard. Let them fuel you. I don't really know what's going to come up next for me in this journey. I'm actually to a point where I really need to sit down and look at what else I want, that next step, because I am currently in the place of the thing that I was trying to do. So now I I need to look at what's next. I also want to take a moment to say too, because that could have been misconstrued, but it's just a reminder for myself. Always remember to celebrate yourself through the little wins. The little wins are the ones that are the most important. And every time you celebrate a win, 
you're wiring your body and your brain to be like, oh, we liked that. So let's do it again. Like it will build your system to work for you instead of against you. So it only hurts you when you don't celebrate your wins, especially your little wins. Um, make sure that you're consistently reevaluating, consistently celebrating, and looking into the future as well. So as I look into the future, I don't know what's going to come. I know that this podcast is going to blow up. I'm calling that into existence. I know that I'm going to have some incredible heavy hitters, some powerhouses on this podcast. It's already starting. I am envisioning that the retreat turns into having a membership. I am envisioning creating several more courses out of the Empowered Academy. And that's another thing, like to hit on that. The Empowered Academy was an idea at one time, and now it's it's real. Like that's really happening. I created a education company, an instructing academy for courses that is globally globally recognized, globally accredited. So we're going to be teaching courses to people that are highly impactful. And I imagine growing that into being like a a brand name. I imagine my coaching business growing so large that my biggest struggle is having to raise my prices because I need to limit how many people I take on. Like I need to raise my prices because I'm getting too many clients. That's how big I'm dreaming. How big do you dream? Does it scare you to dream big? I encourage you to dream big and scary. And then here's the key. Backtrack and build the steps down to where you're at now. Like reverse psychology, what you want, so that it doesn't seem too far away. Have that grand dream. Have that massive belief, that dream life for yourself, and then backtrack and take the steps to like, okay, this is the next step from here. So that your your body and your brain realizes like, oh, I can do the little things that'll get me to there. So you don't trip yourself up before you even get started. So in this, as we talked all about entrepreneurship, I am going to wrap up. But I do just want to say, take some time. If you have not started an entrepreneurship journey, but you know you want to, then sit down right now while you're listening to this, when you get finished, and say, this is what I want for my life. And look at the things that you're good at, the things that you're passionate about, the things that you're talented at, and figure out, okay, well, I could do this. And then what steps do you need to do to do them? Do you need to get a certification? Do you need to save money and start putting money aside for something? Like take little baby steps into the initial creation of this thing and then just do it. Do it messy. Do it scared. Do it with having no idea how you're going to make it happen. Just do it anyhow. And who knows, maybe you're going to be behind a podcast mic talking all about this to someone else one day too. Because if that's what you want, you can do it. I never in a million years expected I was going to be doing a podcast, but now here we are. Your dream can be a reality if you decide. So take this moment to decide. I am so grateful to have each and every one of you have been here along this ride with me who have seen me fall on my face a hundred times and seen me stand up a hundred and one. And continue to stick by my side, continue to invest in my courses, continue to take my healing sessions, continue to believe in myself. And if you're doing that, then I know that you want to believe in yourself too if you do not yet. But just know that I believe in you. And all you need is that um, my belief. Hold on to my belief for yourself that you can have it too. Let this be your permission slip for you to have your entrepreneurship journey too. I love you all so much. I I hope to do this again where we're like recapping. Let's do this again next year. Recap like what's changed in the next year. And I can't wait to hear maybe how any of these episodes have impacted your journey. Have you gotten started because of something that you heard? I can't wait to hear the transitions and the transformations that you make too. So let's do this together. We're in this together. I love you all so much. There is going to be some juicy, juicy guests and topics and episodes all about entrepreneurship this month. So before I wrap up, I just want to give you guys a quick reminder again. 
take a moment to go leave a review wherever you're listening to this, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is, write a lovely review and screenshot it. Don't forget to screenshot it or it will get lost and email it to me at the email that is in the show notes. And I will send you over a guided manifesting meditation for free as a thank you for giving a moment to share your love with me and me sending it right back. So I love you all. I have the best day, the best week, and I will see you right back here next week. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If you want to find out more, you can follow me on Instagram at Empowered with Deanna and my personal page, Fit Deanna Lolita. You can also visit me on my website, which is DeannaMerlinoFit.com. Make sure that whatever platform you guys are listening on, please rate and subscribe. And this means so much to me. It's going to help get me out there to help so many other people. I'm so grateful that you're here with me on this journey of wellness and self-empowerment. I cannot promise that it will always be easy, but I do know that it will always be worth it. Stick with me and together, let's start living as the version of us that we were meant to be because the world is waiting for your gifts and you deserve to live the life of your wildest dreams and beyond. So friends, let's get empowered.